Before we move on to social authentication in the next video, we're going to take a quick look at signals in Django OAuth. And these allow you to hook into different parts of the authentication workflow. For example, when a user registers or when they confirm their email address, you can wire up a signal to actually react to those events. And that's what signals do in Django. They allow you to react to events and perform your own custom logic when things happen. So this will be a short video on that functionality. Before we begin, if you want to support the channel, check out our coffee page. And we've also opened up memberships if you want to become a channel member. And with that, let's signal the start of this video. Now here we have this user profile model that we created in a recent video. And notice this field here on line 10, it's called email verified at, and that's a date time field. Now we're gonna show how to work with a signal in Django Olaf to fill in this information on the user profile model. So when a user confirms their email address, we want this field here to be populated with the date time at which they performed that confirmation. So what we're going to do is refer to the signals documentation and I'll leave a link to this below the video and we're going to have a look through some of these. Now you can see signals for common actions such as users logging in and logging out. We also have a signal for when a user signs up to the application and also when a user's password has been set, changed, reset and so on. And for emails, we have the email confirmed signal. That's the one we're actually going to use in this video. This is sent after the email address in the database was updated and set to confirmed. And we have a bunch of other signals down below that relating to email addresses. So we're going to make use of email confirmed. Let's go back to VS Code here. And in the core application, we're going to create a new Python module called signals.py. And let's import that signal from alloth.account.signals. We're going to import the email confirmed signal. So that comes from the signals module. And if we right click this and go to the definition, you can see the arguments that are expected by this signal. We have the request object and also we have an email address object. Now, as we'll see, the email address is actually a model that's coming from Oloth. So we'll see that in a second. What we can do now is go back to signals.py and I'm going to bring in another import here from Django in order to wire up this signal. So from Django.dispatch, we can import the receiver function. Now this decorator is used to connect receivers to signals. So the signal we're going to use is email confirmed and we're going to define the receiver function just under this code here. So it's a decorator. We can go down here and use the receiver decorator and we pass the signal into that and that is email confirmed. And we can now write the receiver function, which we're going to call email confirmed handler. And as it said in the documentation, that's going to take the Django request as an argument and also the email address object. So two arguments here and you can also pass keyword arguments to capture anything else. So when the signal is fired, we expect this function to be called. And ultimately what we're going to do here is we're going to set this email verified at field to the date time at which the signal was called. Now to begin with, I want to print some things to the terminal. So we're going to print this email address object here and I'm also going to print the type of that object. So we can use Python's built-in type function to get the type of that object. And then underneath that, we're going to get the user from the email address. And the way to do that with the email address model is to access the dot user property. That's a foreign key to the parent user who has that email address. We'll see that in a second, but we can then get the type of the user as well. And this should be an instance of your auth user model in the Django project. Now, in order to demonstrate this on the terminal, let's start the Django server with uv run manage.py run server. And then we're going to go to our application and we're going to go to the sign up page. Now, remember, we added this nonsense in the last video. So we have that up here and we're going to add the 12th iteration of John Doe in this form and register. So I've now filled this information in and we can sign up to the application and that's going to create that user in the database. And what we're going to do is have a look at the database now. So if we go to Beekeeper Studio here, we're going to go to the auth user table and notice at the bottom here, we have our new 12th iteration of John Doe. Now there's a couple of things we need to do in order to see this signal in action. We need to actually confirm the email and you can see on the terminal at the bottom, the email confirmation has been sent to the terminal and we can copy this link in order to verify that. So I'm going to copy that link and we can go back to the browser and in the browser, we can navigate to that page. And we're presented with this page here. Now, before we confirm the email address, there's one step we need to do. We've created signals.py, but what we need to do in the core application is go to apps.py and actually register or import those signals. To do that, we define a function here called ready, and that takes self as an argument because it's a method on this app config class. And then all we need to do here is import core.signals in order to actually import those. 
and that means they're going to be hooked up by Django and this function will then be called when the email confirmed signal is fired. Now let's go back to our email confirmation page and we're going to click confirm here in order to confirm that email and nothing has happened on the user interface but in the background you can see on the terminal at the bottom here we have these objects being printed out. So let's have a look at what these are. Inside this function here we have the email address being printed out and you can see the string version of the email address but if we look at the type of this email address notice that it is a model from Django Oloth and it's this email address model. And from the email address we have a property called user and that gives us access from the email address model to the parent user model which is an instance of Django's user model in this case. Now if we look at the associated database table here we have this account email address table. We looked at that near the beginning of this series and you can see the email address for John Doe on line 9 here. And now that we've confirmed the email address verified is set to 1. And the way that the email address model gets the parent user is through this column here called user ID. That's a foreign key to the user table. So that is all wired up in this model called email address. So we're now ready to set that field on the user profile model. So if we go to the user profile table here, we have this column called email verify that. And for all of the profiles that have been created so far, this is set to null. But what we want to do here when the user confirms the email address is inside this receiver function, set that field to the current date time. Now in order to do that, at the top from django.utils, we're going to import time zone. And I'm going to remove these print statements just now and we can focus on this logic. So we have a user model. And remember the user profile that we have in models.py is linked to a user by a one-to-one -one field. And the related name, if we have a user and we want to get the profile, is specified here and that is just profile. So in order to get the profile from the user, we can simply refer to user.profile on that user model and that's going to give us an instance of the user profile. And all we need to do once we have the profile is set email verified at to timezone.now. So timezone.now is a function and that gives you back the current time on your server. And once you've done that, you can call user.profile.save and that will then save the change to the underlying profile table. So let's demonstrate this again and in order to do so I'm going to go back to the email address table that we have and we have John Doe number 12 here. I'm going to change this back to false so the user has no longer verified their email and then if we go back to the application and navigate back to this confirm email address page that we have here when we confirm this again the signal is going to fire. So let's click confirm now and again we're redirected to this page. But now let's go to the, data, the database, sorry, and we're going to go to the user profile table. Let's view the data and notice for record number three here, it's still null. But when we refresh this table data, we have the date time at which the user confirmed their email address and that was saved into the database. And that is now working because of the signal that we have here. We're listening to the signal when the user confirms their email address and we're calling this receiver function to update that field. And that's how easy it is to hook into signals in Django Oloth. And for example, we could extend this functionality after we save the profile model. For example, you might want to send a post verification email out to the user. And that can be done using a celery task and the delay function, as you can see here. Because of course, every project needs at least one background worker task in order to feel enterprise ready. And maybe you want to speak corporate lingo like we did in the last video. So we could have something like this defined in a salary task. Activate frictionless value delivery pipeline. So we could call that once the user has verified their email and that can all be done by hooking into these signals. So let's remove this nonsense here. What you do in these receiver functions is basically up to you. You can implement any logic you want. But the main point here is that Oloth's account application provides a lot of signals and they're very easy to hook into and they allow you to customize these flows and these actions as required. So that's a simple demonstration of signals in Django Oloth. We're going to move on in the next video and look at social authentication or third party provider authentication. And that's going to look at things like Google and cloud platforms and also get a bit spicy with things like Oauth and tokens and so on. So it's going to be a bit more complex and a bit longer winded. This has been a simple introduction here to signals and this set of videos up to now has been a look at Django Oloth and the account application specifically. So I'll leave a link to the playlist just below this video and if you want to see more let me know in the comments. Otherwise thank you for watching and if you want to support the channel check out our coffee page there's a link just below the video and don't forget to like and subscribe if you're enjoying this content as well. 
Thanks again, and we'll see you in the next video.